Hi everybody, my name is Johnny Vasquez. And I'm Lisa Lene. And we are the co-hosts of the brand new Sweater Knitting Show. The show that we talk just about knitting sweaters. That's right. We don't talk about socks or <laughs> scarves or hats. Cowls, mittens. None, none of that. that. <laughs> Only sweaters. That's it. So today, uh, what are we... Uh, what are we going to be talking about? We are going to be talking about, first of all, our new show and the 30-Day Sweater Challenge. Yep. We'll also be talking about the design competition that's happening in tandem with the challenge. We'll be answering some questions from the chat room and highlighting some pictures from, I guess, Instagram and Twitter and all sorts of things that people are posting about the 30-Day Sweater. Right, and we've also got a great little video for you about choosing your yarn uh, and a couple other special announcements that we'll save till later in the show. Now, for those of you who don't know who we are, uh, I, Johnny, am the uh, creator of New Stitch a Day, where we do daily video knitting and crochet tutorials. And this is my wife, Lacey. I am the in-house designer for the Yarn Craft Academy and also the creator of the 30-Day Sweater course and book. Awesome. So, uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you have about our personal uh, careers and stuff uh, that you uh, later on in the show during our question and answer uh, section. And uh, if you want to join us live, we'll be doing this show every Monday through Friday probably around 10, 10.30 uh, Pacific time. And there will be a live chat room that you can join in and ask questions uh, during the show or at the end of the show during our question and answer portion. Uh, you can find that page at 30daysweater.com slash live. That's 30, the number 30, uh, daysweater.com slash live. Uh, so, be sure to uh, invite your friends and uh, tell people on Facebook and Twitter and any other place that you want to go tell them at. Like your knitting group or right? your local yarn store. Or on an uh, online forum or, or whatever. Uh, we want to have a lot of people come in and uh, interact with us because this is all about you guys. So... so <laughs> Let's get started then. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, first we want to talk to you about the 30-day sweater challenge, which begins tomorrow, which is October 1st. And Lacey, why don't you tell people a little bit about what the challenge is? So the 30-day sweater challenge is where we're challenging 5,000 people all over the world to knit a sweater in 30 days. And we've chosen the month of October to do that. Now, you can do that a couple different ways. You could just pick any sweater pattern and knit it over the course of 30 days with a bunch of other people all over the world. Or you could use our 30-day sweater book to help you walk through the process. And if you want a little more help, you can use our 30-day sweater course, which is online, and it... Um, walks you through all the steps of the 30 days and also has some additional video content and picture tutorials. You have access to our online forum and chat room so that if you need any extra help that that's available. Absolutely. So um, the best way to get signed up for the 30 Day Sweater Challenge if you're not already is to go to 30daysweater.com slash challenge and you can find out all of the information about how to participate in the challenge, as well as download our free sweater planning guide. Now, this is a 30-page a document that we've put together that walks you through all the steps you need to consider before knitting a sweater. Now, it's not just for um, the type of sweater that we do in the 30-day sweater book, which is a, a top-down raglan. This is for any kind of sweater. Uh, so we, we talk about yarn choice, uh, measuring, we give you yardage estimates, um, standard sizes that you'll find. Uh, we also give you a little calendar that you can use to kind of help plan out your sweater knitting so that you can sort of set goals for yourself to make it easier to knit your sweater. But we make that all a whole lot easier in the 30-day sweater book. So why don't you tell them a little bit about the book? 
Actually, I want to say a little more about this sort of planning guide. Okay, sure. If you are going to join the challenge, which we hope you are, um, today would be the day to check out the sweater planning guide so you can kind of get an idea of where you want to go with your sweater and kind of get a little bit prepared before we start knitting tomorrow. Um, and then the book, you said? Yeah. So the 30-Day Sweater Book is a book that walks you through day by day making a custom top-down raglan sweater. And it's basically the easiest way we can possibly explain how to make this type of sweater. And it walks you through step by step by step and gives you just all the types of options that you can possibly imagine. So if you do you want to make a v-neck or a crew neck? Do you want to make a pullover or a cardigan? And then as you get to that point in your sweater, we walk you through how to do it. Now, the other really nice thing about this framework is that it's customizable to your size. So if you are a little bit bigger or a little bit you know, skinnier than what standard sweater uh, sizes are, this sweater is knit to fit you perfectly. So we take your measurements or show you how to take your measurements and then knit a sweater that fits you perfectly. Um, and because there are so many options, you can make a sweater that's completely unique to you. And another cool thing is I usually, like, I have a problem with sweater patterns being um, too short and, like, the sleeves are being too short because I have a really long torso, apparently. Um, and in this course, it's also, like, everything is customizable, including length and, like, shaping. So if you are a really petite person and you need to make things shorter or if you're a really tall person and want to make things longer, that's super easy to do. Very cool. Now, again, we take this even further in the 30-day sweater course. Uh, and this course gives you video tutorials to help you with some of the, not that they're more complicated, but things that may not be as easy to explain in uh, type, uh, you know, through writing. And um, we also give you downloadable worksheets. We're even working on some sweater calculators where you'll be able to enter in your measurements and then the based on the the uh, things that you choose you'll have a sweater pattern that you can then knit um, and we've even created some sweater patterns that work with this system so that you can customize the, those patterns without having to kind of make a completely unique sweater from scratch you kind of have some of those decisions made for you and those will be released over the next week uh, as they're ready. I think we're actually going to talk about one of them tomorrow on the show. So in conjunction with the 30-day sweater challenge, if you are using our book or our course, you're eligible to enter your completed sweater design in our 30-day sweater design challenge. So, um, the, we're talking about the design competition? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people who choose to use our framework for designing their sweater and making something that's completely unique can enter in your sweater design to be voted upon by the community. And uh, we're going to then take the top 12 patterns and include them in one of our pattern collections that we'll be releasing uh, over the course of the next year or so. And we'll probably incorporate those into a book yeah. as and well. If you win or you're in the top 12, there's also a ton of great prizes that I'm actually kind of jealous of. I'm, I actually wish that I could enter and win them all, um, including like a trip to Stitches. Um, it's just entrance, I guess, to any of the Stitches events in 2014. You get a, a Stitches Works package, which is worth about $700. Right. And it includes all access to one Stitches event in 2014. So it doesn't include airfare and travel and that kind of stuff, but you get to attend all of the events, meet your favorite teachers, uh, go check out the floor show. Um, there's some really cool banquets and stuff that they've got going on, the fashion show. Um, and speaking of the fashion show, the winning sweater, the number one most popular sweater, will be featured in the Stitches West fashion show in February uh, in Santa Clara at uh, Stitches, West. Stitches West, which is going to be really cool. Uh, we've got some other really cool prizes, uh, knitting needles from Signature Needle Arts, uh, sweaters worth of yarn from Buffalo Wool Company and Malabrigo. 
Um, and if you've never knit with Buffalo, it's pretty awesome. I think Teresa Miskin is in the chat room, uh, who's one of the owners of that company. And uh, it's just beautiful yarn and very... It basically feels like heaven. Yeah, it's, it's very, uh, what? very luxurious. <laughs> um, the uh, winner is also going to win $1,000 cash uh, for being the number one most popular pattern. So uh, it's definitely a great reason to join in the sweater competition. But remember, you have to use uh, the 30-day sweater framework in either the book or the course to design your sweater. And the reason why is we would love for you guys to design any kind of sweater, but for us to use the sweater pattern in our system, it has to be designed using the system. So. Uh, the cool thing is you don't have to come up with a bunch of sizes. Uh, we'll help you work on how to make the pattern scalable to fit pretty much anyone. And we'll help with writing out the pattern and getting it formatted and everything. You just have to come up with your design and then we'll work with you to do everything else. Absolutely. All right. So, um, when we started the 30 Day Sweater Challenge, we promised to give you guys lots of tips and tricks to help you along the way. And um, we went the other day to one of our favorite local yarn stores to talk to the manager there about yarn selection. So uh, we're going to uh, check that segment out right now. Hi, everybody. One of the first things that goes into planning your sweater is selecting your yarn. And to do that, well obviously you gotta go somewhere to buy it. So we've traveled all the way to Claremont, California to visit one of our favorite yarn stores and talk with the manager, Evelyn, about the different things you'll need to think about when choosing your perfect yarn. So let's head on over to Colors 91711. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Johnny. Hi, Lacey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, we got a few questions for you about yarn. Do you think you can help us out? Absolutely. So, Evelyn, we're here to talk a little bit about yarn today and what goes into finding the right kind of yarn for a sweater. So let's pretend that I've never made a sweater before okay. and I'm looking for the perfect yarn for my sweater. What kind of questions should a person be thinking about when finding their perfect sweater yarn? So the first thing I usually ask about is the care of the item. Do they want it to be hand washable or machine washable? Okay. Um, then who's the sweater for? Is it a gift? Is it for yourself? Uh, next is fiber content. Um, then um, color. Okay. And finally price. How much do they want to send on the whole project? Right, because you can get, you know, you know, a blend of acrylic or something that's really affordable or, you know, make it out of muskox and it'll be a thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Great. So um, let's say that I'm going to be making a sweater for myself. Okay. I'm a bigger guy. Right. And uh, we live in Southern California. It's a little bit warmer most of the year. Uh, what kinds of yarns am I going to want to be looking at? Uh, let's say that um, I, I don't really care so much if it's machine washable. You know, I don't have a problem hand washing it if I want. Um, I, I'm, I want something that's a little bit more neutral. Okay. You know, because I'm I'm a dude. I don't want. Right. I'm not really gonna wear pink. Uh, <laughs> Good. Uh, I mean, I guess I could rock it. You know, if I, <laughs> <laughs> if I felt like it. Um, and. You know, I need a fiber that's going to be good for my climate. I don't have any allergies. Okay. Um, so what uh, types of things would be good? So for our climate, um, especially in the fall, I'm going to recommend something that has either cotton or linen in it. Um, it can have some animal fibers like wool or alpaca, but those do tend to be warmer. Mm -hmm. The benefit is they add a little bit more structure to the to the product. Okay, because cellulose fibers, they don't have the same kind of memory. Exactly. They stretch out more. Right. You know. Um, so that's that's really where I would probably recommend that you start, is look for something that's got a cotton or linen blend to it that gives it some nice breathability. Um, but usually I'm going to recommend something that ha also has, again, the animal fibers. All right, so when it comes to color, mm -hmm. um, what types of things should I be thinking about uh, beyond just, you know, I like things that are a little bit more neutral? So one of the things you want to think about is is it, has this yarn been um, dyed in large batches 
or lots, uh -huh. or has it been small kettle dyed, small batch dyed? Because okay. the color variation can be quite dramatic even within the same batch of a small batch. Okay. Um, so that's something that you want to take into consideration. Either look for lot numbers, and it'll all the lot numbers should be the same. Mm -hmm. That's not a guarantee of uniformity, but usually the colors blend very well together. Okay. Um, or if you're going to go with something that's small batch dyed, you want to think about um, alternating yarns, alternating skeins of yarns in shorter um, groups than in the full ball. Okay. So that you get a little bit more blending if there is some color variation. So for example, a yarn like, let's say Malabrigo, which is really popular, uh, they make a lot of yarn, but they do it in really small batches. Yes. So um, that's an example of something where I might want to be switching things exactly. in and out because they don't really guarantee. That. Correct. Even in the same bag, there's a wide variety of color variation for, for each color. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, well, I think Lacey has some, um, you know, would like to pick your brain about a sweater she has in mind. Okay. So maybe let's go talk to her. Sounds good. So I want to knit something warmer because even though I live in California, I get to travel a lot. Okay. Yay. Um, but I don't want it to take a long time. Excellent. And I'm not too picky on the care. Okay. What kind of things can you recommend? Well, now you're talking my kind of language because I love bulky yarn and I love bulky sweaters. Uh, one of my favorite is Fiber Company's Tundra. It's a fairly new yarn, came out about a year ago. Um, it's got alpaca, wool, silk. Um, it's luxurious to knit with and the colors are just amazing. The colors are awesome. <laughs> so that's what I would recommend. Okay. And it, price wise, is that like fairly medium or a it's little a, more expensive? It's a little more expensive again because of some of the luxury fibers okay. in it. However, you can always go, if you want a cheaper option, you can go to Michael's and find something like Lime Brand Thick and Quick. Same weight yarn for less expensive, and, and that's going to be a, a more manageable price point for some people. Okay. So if I'm using a bulky weight yarn, it pretty much is going to be really warm, right? Yeah, usually. You you don't find a lot that's, of cotton bulky weights. Fine. Cotton, because of its cellulose nature, yeah. can't support its own weight when it gets too thick. Um, so your primary choices are going to be animal fiber based or non-natural fiber based, acrylic based usually. Those can support their weight with the thicker yarn. Alright, sounds good. So if I live somewhere cold, I should probably go with the animal fiber. Go with the animal fiber. If I want bulky weight. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're allergic or the person's well, getting it I'm is allergic, like tell them to wear something <laughs> underneath. <laughs> That's a great option. <laughs> so let's recap. The five things you want to keep in mind when choosing your next sweater yarn are one, garment care. Do you need it to be easy to wash or are you okay with something a little bit more delicate? Two, who are you making it for? Is this going to be a gift or something for yourself? Three, fiber content. Is this something that you're going to wear in a warm climate or a cooler climate? Are you allergic to any particular fibers? Four, color selection. Pay attention to the dye lot when buying your yarn. And if you're getting something that has smaller color batches, have a plan for how you'll use that yarn in your sweater pattern. Also, think about what you wear most often and what colors look good on you. Five. How much do you want to spend? Is this going to be a indulgence where you want to buy a little bit more expensive yarn or is this something a little bit more utilitarian that you want to be more affordable? If you can answer these questions or most of them before you go to purchase your yarn, it'll make your trip a lot easier. Once you've chosen your yarn, go ahead and take a picture of it and share it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Make sure to use the hashtag 30 day sweater and tag the yarn store and yarn company of the product that you're using. We can't wait to see what you're working with. All right, so we hope that you guys learned a little bit about uh, sweater planning for your yarn. Um, and we go into a little bit more detail about those different topics in the sweater planning guide, which if you haven't downloaded, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash guide and uh, there you can enter your email and it'll take you to a page to download the guide. Now, if you've already signed up, that's okay. It's not going to sign you up a second time, but if you need to get the guide, that will 
take you to the place to download the guide. So, um, uh, Next, we're going to show you guys some uh, images that we found on the web of people who are taking the 30-Day Sweater Challenge. Who are getting ready to knit. So they've already taken pictures of their yarn and getting ready to um, start their sweaters tomorrow. So let's take a look at what we've got. First up, we have... This is from Stephanie Gurr, uh, <laughs> and she took a picture of her beginning to swatch uh, using the sweater planning guide and calendar. Um, and I don't know what yarn she's using there, but... Looks nice. So yeah. Uh, here we've got Badgley CN, and she's using some Knit Picks yarn that she's going to be making her next sweater from. Uh, Knit Pick seems to be a pretty popular choice because we also have Amy Kinds 68 who uh, posted this picture on Instagram of her Knit Picks yarn that she'll be using to make a sweater. And now these are 50 gram balls of yarn from Knit Picks, mm -hmm. and they've got five of them there. So as I, I'm a big guy. I have to use like 20 million balls of yarn <laughs> to make a sweater for me. Um, what's what is she looking at yardage wise and um, you know, is that going to be enough? Well, it really depends on the size of sweater she's making. Um, five uh, 50 gram balls would be enough to make. Um, it really depends on the yardage. I can't see on there the yardage, but um, basically, if she's making a sweater for a smaller person, it should be fine. Um, for a person your size, probably not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And finally, we. They said the sound stopped just because I forgot to put the Wow. That's live <laughs> broadcasting for Hello. you guys. It didn't freeze. We just forgot to turn the mic on that image. So here we go. Here, this yarn is uh, by Renny Gitan. And again, it's a uh, sort of a red uh, and a red black blackish brownish uh, hand painted yarn I'm really excited to see how this turns out I'm not really sure what they're awesome. going to do with it um, I don't know who it's from but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe they can uh, text us and or uh, tweet at us and let us know what the yarn is uh, but if you guys want to see your projects featured here on the sweater knitting show uh, go ahead and use the hashtag 30 day sweater and uh, we'll be watching out for our favorite photos um, and be uh, posting them up here throughout the t entire challenge. Just uh, think your yarn could be famous. Right? Yeah. Um, and like we said in the, uh, the earlier segment, uh, make sure that you tag the company and the place that you bought it as well. Because we want to make sure that they know that you're participating in the challenge as well. So... Um, well, someone said post the in Ravelry as well. Yeah, support the local yarn stores there. That would be great. Uh, so we're going to wrap things up today, but we want to take a few minutes to answer questions. Um, so we're going to go to the chat room here. If you have questions that you want answered, we're going to do our best to answer them for you, particularly if you have questions about the challenge and the design competition, how those things work. Um, if you're having issues technically watching the uh, live stream, there is going to be a recording that you can watch on 30daysweater.com. We'll also have it posted up on our YouTube channel. And pretty soon we're going to have this up on iTunes as well as an audio podcast. Um, so you'll be able to, as soon as that's ready, we'll let you guys know when, when you can download that on iTunes. Um, but otherwise we're not going to be answering questions about technical issues, watching the live stream in the chat room for now. So, um, so let's see what we've got here. 
Um, what? Does a sleeveless vest count as a sweater? Yes. Yes, it does. If you're making it, <laughs> uh, our framework doesn't really work very well with a vest for the, you know, like a raglan is not really designed to be made into a vest. Um, it's probably not impossible to do. We did try it a couple times, and we just didn't like the way that it looked, so we don't recommend. But if you're using if you're anyway. using a, another pattern to make yeah. a sweater vest, it's it, kind of cheating. But yes, it does count. That's not even true because I'm making a dress that has like little cap sleeves, so not having sleeves is not cheating. Fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> sleeveless is fine. Go for it. So Maureen is using our book to make her sweater and she says the calculations for the front of her sweater come out to be 16 and a half stitches for left and the same for right what should I do should I round up or down uh, I'd probably say go ahead and round up it will make the difference of basically one stitch so you're not gonna be you know it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference in the front of your sweater but um, if you wanna go a stitch up or a stitch down it doesn't matter too much I always say round up so go for 17 on each side. Yeah, it's better to have a tiny bit more than a little, than not enough. So um, if you don't know what we're talking about when it comes to um, what she's working on as far as her sweater, uh, the way that this top-down construction works is that you know, you're building the right and left sides of the sweater uh, as you go. And so that's where she's coming up with a little bit of, confusion in her math but uh, again a little bit more is better than not enough uh, Jan 3 says I bought yarn recommended in my pattern I'm now up three sizes in my needles and my gauge is still not right should I get thicker yarn uh, now blooming knitter in the chat room actually had a really good response to that oh you want to read it oh if your fabric is getting too loose then getting a thicker yarn might be what you want to do. If you still like the look and feel of the knitted fabric you're getting, even those, even though your needle size is dramatically different than the pattern calls for, there's no need to get a thicker yarn. So basically, what they're saying is the needle size is a suggestion in a pattern. So if you are knitting at the same like tightness or looseness as the designer was, then you'll use the same size of needle. But the gauge is the really important part. So if you have to go up five needle sizes to get the same gauge with the same yarn, then I, there's no problem with that. Or if you have to go down needle sizes, um, I typically have to go down a needle size or two. I mean, up a needle size or two because I knit tightly. And then my mom is the opposite. So she'll go down like five needle sizes occasionally because she knits very loosely. Um, if you are using a different yarn, um, it gets a little bit different there. Um, it sounds like um, for her gauge, she'll be using a bulky weight yarn um, to get that kind of gauge. If you're using a different yarn, it tends to change a little bit because um, the thickness of the actual fabric itself can get quite loose if your um, yarn is even just a little bit smaller. So um, those are some things to consider as you are getting your gauge. Yeah, 18 stitches per four inches is pretty close to four stitches per inch, which is on the very tail end of what would be considered worsted weight yarn. It's kind like of, an it's like a chunky, or, yeah, yeah, more like an Aran weight type yarn. Um, so it's not quite a bulky weight yarn, um, but it's, it's pretty close. So um, those are some things to consider. Um, if you're designing your own sweater, then you don't have to worry as much about getting gauge um, that to match a gauge of your designer because you're making it. You just have to think about the feel of the fabric that you're getting with a certain needle size. So that's one of the benefits of making your own patterns. <laughs> uh, Deb says, I have no idea how to tweet or tag, nor do I have a tweet account. Uh, well, that's okay. Um, you can share your uh, stuff on Facebook as well using the hashtag 30 day sweater and we'll be able to find that and uh, using a hashtag just means put a little number sign and then write 30 day sweater in your post 
Right, yeah, it's just uh, the pound sign from the, the number symbol. Yes. Uh, Yarnball wants to say, where do I get the sweater guide? Again, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash guide, and then you'll just have to enter your email, and it'll take you to the page where you can download the sweater guide. Will your book give us a sweater pattern we might use? Want to talk about that? Um, sort of. So the the way that the book works is that you're kind of designing your pattern as you go. Now we give you some sort of guidelines and, and things to think about what you want your pattern to look like. We actually give you kind of a worksheet where you can draw out what you want the pattern to be. And then based on those choices, you knit the pattern uh, using the kind of instructions that we give you for each of those sections. So if you followed the pattern or if you followed the book just using the very most basic uh, instructions, then technically, yes, there is kind of a simple raglan sweater. Um, it would be a pullover. It, yeah, it would be a crew neck pullover raglan sweater. but. It's not written in the way that you may be used to a sweater being written. It's not going to be like, cast on this many stitches and then knit this many rows and then do this. Um, it's, it's a little bit more fill in the blanks type thing. So it'll say, uh, to figure out how many stitches to cast on, you'll enter your neck measurement here and your gauge measurement here. And then you do some simple math problems and... We walk you through, all right, this is how many stitches you're going to cast on for the yarn you've chosen. Right. We want it to be something that's unique to you, um, and that's just not possible to do with a pre-written sweater pattern. Uh, now, we have created a series of sweater patterns in order to um, help you if you are kind of like, ah, I'm not sure I want to do that. Like, that sounds like it may be a little bit more involved in what you want to do. Um, we've created a series of sweater patterns that we'll be talking about tomorrow that you can uh, either buy individually or if you have purchased the course, they're all included. And then you can knit that pattern, but you'll knit it based off of your measurements. So the pattern will then fit you perfectly. Um, somebody says, does the book come with the course purchase? Yes. The book does come with the course purchase. Uh, Catagirl Artist says, what different kinds of neck and sleeve constructions do you include? So some of the different necklines that we have included um, that we've actually updated the course to have now is um, obviously crew neck, v-neck, and then we have shawl collars, cowl collars, hoods, and then a couple other like simple uh, ribbed collars and garter stitch collar, I believe. And we'll be adding some more of those things yeah. as we as we go. Right now, we haven't uh, flushed out the sleeve section a whole ton. We've just given you basic sleeve shaping um, equations. So uh, most of those are for long or three quarter length sleeves. But you can easily adapt the pattern to be cap sleeves or um, short sleeves as well. Um, Deb says, what about what you said about the vest? I did one last time. You said it would work. I made the raglan too long, but other than that, it fit fine. So what or how didn't it work? Um, you know, it's just inconsistent from person to person. So that's why we've chosen to not make that an option. It doesn't mean people can't do it to make a sweater uh, vest, a sweater vest. Um, it's just we weren't confident enough that the result would be the same every single time, so that's why we took it out. Uh, let's see. How do we get the book if they've already purchased the course? If you already purchased the course, there's a section that says Downloads when you log in, and then the very first download is the book. Well, there you go. I purchased the course. I hope to adapt it to a zipped cardigan. Will that be included in the course? Yes, indeed it will. Um, we have a whole section about adding zippers. Um, it's actually a really, really simple way to make a, a cardigan. It's actually easier than adding buttons. Um, so I actually, I just made one with a zipper and I love it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really great option. Uh, Melian says, will there be more detail for making the hoodie 
pockets. Um, so there's a pattern that we're going to have that has a hoodie on it. And um, it doesn't right now include kind of like a pockets on the front, more like a... No, in the course it'll have, it has instructions. But the, the actual yeah. course does include instructions and the individual pattern will have instructions to add. Yeah, so there's, there's actually two different kind of hoodie pockets. So there's actually one that's kind of just like a long rectangular tube and it's got ribbing on the sides. And then there's the one that you see more often on like store-bought hoodies that are like, um, it's kind of like a triangle at the top and then a rectangle at the bottom. Um, so that one's a little bit more difficult, but it's all um, it's all in the patch pocket section of the book, and it will also I think we're probably going to do a picture tutorial on how to do that in the course. Right, as well as if you purchase the individual pattern, if you're not taking the course, that will be in there as well. What time will you be online tomorrow, and what time does the class start? I think she's talking about the Yarncraft Academy class. So we run a website called the Yarncraft Academy where we do live online classes about once a week or so. If you're interested in joining us for that tonight, it's at 5.30 p.m. Pacific where we'll be talking about steaking. Um, which is which actually is, a good option for yeah, this um, uh, if you are considering steaking your sweater. Um, but we have a free replay tomorrow at 10 o'clock, which will be about the same time that we'll be doing this live class as well. But again, this class or this show is recorded, so you can watch it anytime. Uh, let's see. Someone else said something about purchasing the book. Do you have to buy the book? No, you don't have to buy the book to take the, the challenge. You can find whatever pattern you want yep. and knit along with us. The problem is we can't offer you support on those patterns because we didn't design them. So we don't really know necessarily what goes into the intricacies of those patterns. Um, particularly if you buy a pattern from someone, like we don't own the pattern. So you're going to be much better off asking questions of those designers. If you're using our book or the course, then we can offer you a lot more help throughout the challenge. No, so there's not a 30 day sweater class tomorrow, Debs. Do we have to have our yarn by tomorrow? No, technically you do not have to have your yarn by tomorrow. Um, we are just starting the actual knitting um, for the 30 day sweater um, because that's convenient for us. If you're not doing the 30 day sweater or your yarn's not in yet, like mine isn't in, <laughs> um, you can wait a couple days and catch up. Um, or if you're just knitting a sweater pattern, just, you know, you can separate it over 26 days instead of 30 or whatever you need to do. Um, for the design competition, if you're interested in, in submitting a pattern for that, um, you'll actually have about two extra weeks that you can finish up the pattern and, and send in your photos before we do the voting. So you actually kind of have more like six weeks to finish uh, before we begin. All right, guys. Well, that looks like all of the questions that we have for you uh, today. Um, one other thing that we have to announce is we just started a 30-day sweater Ravelry group. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, interact with people on Ravelry who are doing the, uh, the challenge, you can find that on Ravelry by going to groups, or the easiest way is just go to 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry. And that will take you directly to the group page where you can join. Um, we'll be, you know, popping in there and and uh, chatting with everybody uh, during the challenge. It's a great place to introduce yourself, show what you're working on and stuff. Um, again, we also have in our 30-day sweater course a full forum where you can ask questions and get help with the sweater that you're knitting. Uh, share your progress, and we'll actually be going in very detail about sweater designs that we're working on uh, for the 30-day sweater that will be coming out in the future. Uh, so remember, go to 30daysweater.com slash Ravelry, and that will take you to the Ravelry group where you can sign up. Remember, you can also follow us on Twitter at at 30daysweater. Uh, you can go check out our Facebook page which is facebook.com slash 30 day sweater. You can find us on Instagram at 30 day sweater. <laughs> We're pretty original with our names. 
And uh, if you're interested in purchasing the book, you can get that at 30daysweater.com slash book. Or if you want to take the 30 Day Sweater course, you can go to 30daysweater.com slash course. And there's a special coupon code in your sweater planning guide where you can get 25% off of either of those. Now remember, the book is included in the course. So you don't have to buy them together. They already are included one in the other. So you're, you're getting kind of like an extra $25 value in the course already. All right. So that's pretty much it for today. Tomorrow, uh, we hopefully I think are going to have an interview, um, maybe two. We're going to be talking about uh, some of the patterns that will be uh, released for this 30-day sweater challenge. And uh, we'll also be talking about the first steps in knitting your actual sweater. Uh, probably, what is the first first step? Um, it's actually just planning, swatching, and then a little bit of math. Um, I'm also measuring. Yes. So we probably will be measuring me on camera because oh, I don't know that Lacey wants to be measured on camera, but I don't care. I don't care. Uh, this is just an ebook, Sue. So it's not a hardcover book. So not yet. Yeah. So we'll be here live tomorrow between 10 and 10 30. Um, we're not sure exactly when we'll be uh, getting up live, but you can expect us to be here every day by 10 30, uh, Monday through Friday throughout the challenge. And then we'll be going to more of a, a weekly podcast uh, in November. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have more questions, again, go ahead and put them in the uh, Ravelry group. Uh, or if you're already taking the course, you can put those in the forum on the 30daysweater.com course. So, uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.